How are you? I'm fine. Oh, fine. Everything's fine. What about when it's not fine? When I'm really struggling in my life, feeling lonely, feeling scared, feeling in pain, that usual polite uh, exchange, that response, how are you, I'm fine, starts to feel really constricting, starts to feel really suffocating. Last year, my dad was diagnosed with a serious illness. And at the time, I was working at a new job. I was scared. I was living alone in a new city. And I felt so stuck in this culture of, I'm fine. I felt like I couldn't tell anyone at the congregation where I was working. I hardly knew them. I was new. I was trying to prove myself. And I didn't want them to feel like they had to take care of me. And some of that makes sense. Some struggles are too close for leaders to share. But every time I had that exchange, how are you? Oh, fine. I felt like a liar. I'm so glad that I had some communities where I felt like I could share. And one of them was this one. It was the Church of the Larger Fellowship. I started coming to online services at about this time. One of them was a little bit more unexpected. A few months but prior to this, I had joined a secular community women's chorus. Every rehearsal, uh, we end our rehearsal by joining hands, and then people are invited as they feel called to share what's going on. People share that they're getting married, that they're having a baby. They ask for good thoughts for a jo an important job interview. And then we all stand there join hands and we sing circle round for freedom circle round for peace it's not a prayer circle but it kind of is it's not a religious community but it kind of is and so that evening I took a deep breath and I introduced myself I said I was pretty new but I wanted to share. I told them my dad was facing a serious illness and I was worried and I was scared and I felt alone. And I could see the concern and the care on people's faces. My hand being held was squeezed. And as we sang that night, I felt present. I felt seen. My dad was still sick and I was still terrified. But as we sang, it felt like that care and that love was sending a strong force of healing and hope out into the world. As a religious liberal, I sometimes feel kind of self-conscious about praying for healing the whole word prayer aside, I don't really believe that God is sort of granting wishes, um, that people who ask hard enough or in the right way will receive some kind of cure that wouldn't have happened already. It sort of begs the question, well, what about the people who ask and yearn and pray and aren't cured? Did God not like them? I don't think that's true. That's not how I understand God. And I also, my understanding of God isn't really that supernatural anyway. The idea of a being sort of reaching in to the world and rearranging things. But I do believe that prayer can be healing. I believe it's important to give voice to our deepest hopes, our deepest yearnings. And I believe it's even important to pray for things that we don't think are probably going to happen. To pray for my dad's illness to disappear, to pray for somebody's cancer to go into remission, to pray for an end today to 
all discrimination against lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. Um, to pray for healing from the unconscious racism which permeates my own psyche and so much of our society. I don't necessarily think that that will happen, at least not right away. But I believe that in giving voice to those deep yearnings, those deep hopes and prayers for healing, that is where we find the holy, and that is where we find healing. Through honesty, through caring, through sharing our pain and our brokenness, and by doing that in the strong web of a community, we can transform that yearning and that isolation into a strong circle of wholeness and of healing. It's powerful, it's countercultural, and it's an important part of what we do here and of religious communities of many varieties that we may also be a part of. There is healing. There is wholeness. May we help one another find it.